And we're back with more of the Pope on Film. Honey. Yes. Are you ready for another exciting installment of Bunny Versus starring the illustrious, the uncom the incomparable? The incomparable the some third thing, Bunny Williams. Are you ready? Are you pumped? Are you amped? Are you jazzed? Are you psyched? Are you primed? Are you amped up? Are you hyped up? Are you hyped, Bunny? Are oh, you yeah. ready? Okay. Then without any further ado, it's time once again for Bunny Versus. And now here is your host, Bunny Williams. Take it away, Bunny. I like the dress and I like how it matches your hair, but I don't like it as much as that badass blue fucking jacket you have. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's more Mr. Steve's jacket. Yeah. So I don't wear it for the podcast, but I do like this outfit. I'm, I'm, trying, to, I'm trying to do the podcast from the side so that everyone can see my big, fake boobies. Okay. I also, uh, I also wear the mask sometimes. It's part of the whole process because I've shaved a good portion of my facial hair because now um, I have done this a couple of times. I've gone out in a dress. Yeah. This past week I went to CVS and picked up my medication dressed as a woman. And it's the first non-pride time that I had ever done that. And it was scary and frightening. And I've since done it uh, like once more, gone out in a dress. And so I shaved a big portion of my beard and my facial hair so that when I'm wearing a mask, it covers up my uh, mustache and I look almost passable. Yeah. Because, and then, you know, my, my uh, lovely uh, child, Bella, says that I don't have to be passing as long as I'm comfortable in the dress and, 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 you know, I'm comfortable with myself and my body and all of that. But it's less about me trying to pass to, uh, to make people happy and more about I live in Oklahoma and I don't want to get fucking lynched. Well, yeah, that's the thing. And that's something oh. I wanted to say and, like, something that I should probably just say the once and never again, but, like, yeah, I worry, dude. I mean, I love you. I don't want you to get hurt, you know? I mean, yeah, I, don't, you, I don't do it. You know, yeah. I'll always support you in what you do, you know, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to worry. Yeah. I mean, you're in fucking Oklahoma, you know? Yeah. So that's why I, I barely do it. But when I do, I make sure that I'm with someone. So when I went to CVS, I went to CVS with Natasha. And Natasha was holding my hand the whole time. Yeah. And, and when it was time to deal with people, Natasha was there. Because oftentimes, again, she is my designated white person. Sure am, motherfucker. <laughs> and so I'm very comfortable now going out and about in a dress as long as I have my uh, DWP with me my designated white person who if needed be can care and out in my defense yeah. Yeah. but like from afar like I'll be driving in the car and I'll be like this and, 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 and Natasha knows how to tackle people we know this yes absolutely so, Natasha is not someone you want to fuck with. Oh, yes. Uh, I, I know. I, I live with them, so I know. I absolutely know. Yeah. So, uh, so I've been trying to be more out, you know? Yeah. I've been trying to be more out and posting more about being out. And for the longest time, I felt that, like, my gender and my sexuality and my sometimes wanting to dress up as a woman is my thing that I keep to myself and I don't have to share it with anyone else because this is just me and I want to keep it to myself and it's none of your business. But also being out and being proud of who you are does help a lot of other people who are 
not as brave to be out. And I have heard from a couple of people who were close in my life who, who were like, I'm so proud of you for just being yourself and being out and being open. You know, I've also wanted to dress as a woman, but I've always been scared to. And it's like, okay, there you go. Okay, so I'm, I'm helping people. Yeah. By being more out. Yeah. And it's been uh, scary as fuck, but yeah. So anyway, uh, Bunny, uh, it's Bunny Versus. It's our free form segment where we get to talk about whatever we want. And something big happened to me this week that I've been wanting to talk about. Okay. Okay. This is a big deal. This is a serious deal. And it means a lot to me. And, uh, oh, okay. I want to talk about this. All right. I went to a flea market. Okay. <laughs> I went to a fucking flea market and I bought something. It was only $10. It's an Elvira commemorative plate from 1988. Oh. <laughs> I bought it for only 10 bucks. It came with a certificate of authenticity. Nice. Is it Franklin Mint? Uh, no, it's Ernst, making fine art affordable. Yeah, I, Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, do testify with this certificate of authenticity that this artwork, Night Rose, was commissioned by my command and created expressly for this limited edition by artist Susie Morton. These will be produced for a period of 90 days, then permanently closed forever. I got plate number 162. And apparently there are people on eBay that are selling this for 30 to $50. Yeah. But yeah, I got it for 10 bucks. Nice. At, at a flea market. And see, like, that's oh. something, but see, that's something that, that kind of annoys me about Colorado Springs. Like, why aren't we making a bigger deal out of Elvira? You know? Yeah. She is from Colorado Springs. Why are we not making a bigger deal out of Lon Chaney? Why are we not making a bigger deal out of Tesla? You know, as a town, Fuck. We, we, we've got some interesting things. Those are three of them. You know? Yeah. And like... Yeah, it... You, you, if you I if, hear about it, there's like not a Lon Chaney day or, you know, a Tesla festival in the fall or anything like this. Yeah, you you hardly ever hear people talking about the celebrated Oklahoma, uh, Colorado pirate Black Bart who actually hid his gold inside of a cave. Yes. Inside of a inside of a legendary now lost place called Casa Bonita, scientists, archaeologists have been searching for it for centuries. Yeah, yeah. So you don't hear people talking about that either. Was that the f- week, but... was that the first flea market you had ever gone to? No, I've gone to a bit. I, I, there was a huge fucking flea market in Oklahoma, the, in Phoenix, that my parents would drag me to. And I went to the Sacramento one once or twice. There's one here in my small town. And my wife and I have gone to it a couple of times only because my stepfather and his husband have a cookie business. So uh, every other Saturday, they have a booth in my town. Father-in-law? Father-in-law? Okay, father. my father-in-law and his husband have a uh, cookie business, like a sweet business, or like yeah. a treat, like a bakery shop, and they sell it at the flea market every other week in my town, and so sometimes we go and visit him, but this time we just said, let's just make a lap. Let's just make a lap and see what we can get. I got a tiny action figure of the Sugar Crisp Bear <laughs> for the kids to play with. And yeah, I got a I got a fucking Elvira plate. I I went there I went there a <coughs> I year or two ago. I, I got an eight track. That's cool. 
Yeah, I got an 8-track player there once. Yeah. An 8-track player with the best of Johnny Mathis in it. Nice. That's bucks. So, yeah, I love the flea market. As long as you stay away from the guy who uh, is selling all the Biden is not the president, Trump 2024 flags, then everything else is very nice. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Oh, and also I was let go by a company. Yeah, yeah no. I, I wanted to find out and ask, you okay? Yeah, uh, what they said was, uh, like, Vince McMahon showed up and said budget cuts. Yeah. Basically, that the nonprofit that I do story times with, I got the call while I was at the flea market, so that was a tie-in. And it's like, man, I'll always remember this flea market now. I'll always remember this one flea market trip as the the time, the time when I got that kick-ass Elvira plate and <laughs> nothing else happened, just that. But yeah, they gave me a call while we were checking out old-timey furniture and uh, back in the day when we first started raising little leaders, which is, which is a, an educational uh, story time event that I helped create in 2018 and now i've been let go from temporarily right now uh raising little leaders has a budget of zero and they just can't afford me so what they have been doing and what they will continue to do is they have local authors that are coming in and they're like hey we'll gladly do a story time for you for free as long as we get to promote our fairly lame books so that's what they're doing now instead of paying me. And they said that hopefully in the future, sometime we'll be able to afford to pay you again. We just can't do it now. And that's a bit upsetting because this was a huge part of Mr. Steve's life. But also, I don't want to say that it might have something to do with all of this. Yeah. Pressuring to me in a dress with a beautiful bow in my hair and my nails painted and big fake boobies because the nonprofit is not religious. Yeah. But all the people who run it are very religious and the nonprofit gets a lot of its money from some religious companies but I like to give them the benefit of the doubt and say that my being let go of, of temporarily has nothing to do with the fact that I've come out as gender fluid and pansexual and I've been posting more pictures of myself in dresses being the pretty woman that I yeah. sometimes am. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and say these are two separate things that are in no way connected some people might see a connection there and uh, think that this is a bit sus with the timing, but I am not thinking that. That's just a rumor that I have heard. Yeah. But there is no proof to any of those rumors. Uh, so that was yesterday, and I stayed up until 1.30 a.m. last night uh, drinking and getting high yeah and eating chips i was on the couch and i was in uh, a nighty and i was drinking blackberry whiskey my okay. wife and i have been getting very into uh like actual alcohol like not just beers we always drink beers but now we're getting into more adult alcohol and she and my wife found this blackberry whiskey and it's a whiskey that i can drink and not make a whiskey face <laughs> it's really smooth going down and doesn't make my face pucker up like i just ate an entire fucking onion you know that face where you're drinking whiskey and just <clears throat> But but no, it's, it was really smooth, and I sat there on the couch, and I finally I finally watched Bo Burnham's new Netflix special. Isn't it and fucking it good? Blew me away. Yeah. Blew me away. 
It was the perfect way to watch it because it, it was one of those things where, like, Emerald is like, have you watched the Bo Burnham special yet? You haven't watched it yet? You have to watch it. I should make you, I should sit you down and make you watch it. It's really great. And Bella's like, fuck, you haven't watched the fucking special? Fuck you, you fucking fuck. And, like, and so many people, like, Destiny text me. And, I, and, and it's like, oh, Destiny, I haven't talked to you for the longest time. How are you doing? And she's like, good. Have you watched the Bo Burnham special yet? And it got to one of those things where it's like, okay, I'm not going to fucking watch it on my own at this point. Because y'all, to quote Mr. Show with Bob and David, y'all are brutalizing me. Yeah. And I'm just going to step back. But I, I had the whiskey in my hand. I was in a nighty, and I just sat down on the couch and Bella put on the Bo Burnham special. And I was like, okay, I'm not watching it. Bella is. And I'll just sit here and casually watch it. And it was, it, I fucking fell in love with it. Yeah. Fell in love yeah. with it. So fucking good. And so that was nice. And now I feel like one of the good things is about me not doing story times with a nonprofit is that there is a part of me that has wanted to be more out about my gender fluidity and the fact that sometimes I am a woman, but I have been scared to because of the nonprofit that I do story times with. And I didn't want to, uh, for lack of a better term, I didn't want to spook the straights. You know, well, with all of this. But now that I am not, where are you going? Oh, we're going to get the rest of this. Okay. Maybe, so maybe get know. some snacky snacks. I don't have that much food right now. Don't worry. Uh, we're just going to school. Okay. 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 Um, I will be going later. Okay. Uh, here are some options for school supplies. Okay. Uh, shotgun. Bulletproof vest. Flash grenades, pepper spray, bear mace, a bat that you had. Okay, she's gone. Uh, <laughs> uh, so now that I'm not officially working with the nonprofit, I feel like I can be more open. And what I want to do is just start a story time like this. And just be, hello, everybody, it's me, Mr. Steven. It's time for another story time. And FYI, sometimes I will be dressed like this, and it's not a big deal. Today we're reading the following book. And just, that's all I mention about it. Sometimes I'm in a, and then I'll end it. Like, and that's today's story. Did you like that? I like that. FYI, sometimes Mr. Steve's in a dress. It's not a big deal. Thanks for watching. Be sure and like and subscribe. And I've always wanted to do that, but I've been scared about how the nonprofit would react. But now that I'm not working for the nonprofit, fuck it. I'm going to be a lot more open and out about things. Yeah. And and I'm happy about that. I, I I did a video game playthrough on my kids YouTube on my kid friendly YouTube channel where I played a game and it was Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen's Girls Night Out. And so I was like, I'm gonna play this game because if I'm that. playing Girls Night Out, I saw that, and I'm wearing a dress, I can get away with wearing a dress in a video. And so I made it like a funny bit, but I also tried to be as pretty as possible. And I was really proud of that story time because it's like, that is me secretly out in a kid's video. Yeah. And that gave me like a taste of like, oh, I could kind of do this. I was also proud of my last Captain America story time because it's like, oh, I'm going to transform into Captain America. What? I'm Rick from Rick and Morty. Oh, man, maybe I should try again. What? I'm in a dress. I can't believe it. Uh, this isn't Captain America. Ooh, but I really like the dress. Look at the frills on it. And I like how it swishes. Oh, but that's beside the point. I do a good. That's beside the point. I got to transform into Captain America. So I've been trying to secretly put me in a dress in the kids channel, but now I can just do it. And I'm really happy about that. So anyway, that's been my week. It's been fun. How are you doing, Bunny? Is this incoming mail? He said, how are you doing? Yeah, I, something came up. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> So, so since something came up, I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about me. Uh, that's my favorite subject. That and uh, uh, the history of ancient Rome. I was born in 1924 in Tupelo, Connecticut, which not a lot of people know that Tupelo, Connecticut is a yeah. thing. Uh, 
Uh, I lived a pretty comfortable life. My dad invented blinking, and my mom was a professional camel kicker. And yeah. so we lived pretty comfortably. My 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 childhood was a, a well regarded. Uh, you know, don't don't sell your mom short. A well regarded camel kicker. Yeah, she was one of the she was one of the top camel kickers in her field, uh, in her weight class, I should yeah. say, because she was the light heavyweight camel kicker. So she kicked the smaller, lighter camels. It wasn't about her weight. It was about the camel's weight. That's how it is in the world of camel kicking. My childhood was fairly uneventual. Uh, boarding schools in Prague, Connecticut, which, again, not a lot of people know there's a Prague, Connecticut. Yeah. Uh, and, and spending my weekends just uh, shooting at pigeons with, with a paint gun. And so uh, to this day in Connecticut, you'll go to Connecticut and you'll just see like, oh, look, there's a purple pigeon. And like, yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> a lot of the pigeons in Connecticut are like rainbow colored. And yeah, I, I did that. You're welcome. They breed like that now. Yeah. You hit pigeons enough with a, with, with a paintball gun and, and they will just start breeding colorful. So, yeah, that was my childhood. How have you been, Bunny? I I have I have been okay just working on Dabney, uh, running yeah. into problems. It's and it's all the learning curve, and I just have to get through it. But it's just annoying as fuck. Yeah, you know. So that's really about it for that. I keep doing redoing the same bits over and over again. It's getting on my nerves. And weird shit just yep. pops up, and I have to redo it, and rethink, rethink what I'm doing, and then try yep. it again. You know, I have him. I have his his introductory dialogue, which is only like two fucking minutes, like two minutes, two minutes twenty seconds, something like that. It's not even a long bit, and I cut it in. I cut it line for line. So I think I got like 44 clips, you know, yeah. of him saying a line, saying a line, saying a line, so I could just concentrate on the animation uh, from like, uh, uh, uh. how is he moving for <laughs> what he's saying, you know. Yeah. But then all of a sudden he started dropping his position down on me, so I'm having to do it all again. Irritating. Huh? Irritating. Yeah, it sounds it. Yeah. So, and that's... Ha, uh, ha, uh, ha, uh, ha, uh, sing a line, sing a line, ha, uh, ha, uh, ha, uh, ha, uh, <laughs> sing a line. I thought that was cute. And of course, man, whenever you write a bit, you know... And you think it's really funny. When you have to work on it for this fucking long, there is not a goddamn thing funny about it anymore. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I get that. I get that. That Joker bit that I did a couple of weeks ago about the guy who was uh, the far-right guy who was arrested and he had pictures of himself as uh, as uh, Joaquin Phoenix's Joker. When yeah. I wrote that, I thought it was a really good bit, but then like that episode was big, so I pushed it back a week, and then I pushed it back two weeks, and then I pushed it back three weeks, and by the time I finally did it for the podcast, I was like, I'm just going to rip through this fucking Joker bit. I don't even know if it's good anymore. Like I've pushed yeah. it back so many times that like... I've read this in my mind so many times that it's just, it, it, there's nothing exciting about it. So just fucking, the Joker sucks. Okay, there you go. Let's move yeah. on. So yeah, I, I know how that feels. So that is, that's, that's it. That's it. Uh, have you, have I've you got also a short... considered, have you also considered I'm not even sure what I'm thinking. Other things that you could do that you would not necessarily do if you were still attached to Loveworks? Uh, 
There are some LGBTQ friendly books that I want to start reading for the for for my channel. Yeah. That that I that while I was getting paid a decent amount by a company that I may have purposefully strayed away from. There was a part of me that wanted to do a story time at the Pride Parade, but I didn't because I searched like, hey, Pride Parade videos for kids. Here's one video from Blue's Clues, and he, and here's another video that someone did at a, explaining Pride Parades for children, and then here's 5,000 others calling LGBTQ people pedophiles and how pride parades are dangerous and indoctrinating children and it's filled with all of these sex acts and all of these people are perverts and it's like, fuck! <laughs> maybe I shouldn't do a video at a pride parade and also, maybe the organization that I do story times with wouldn't in 100% like the fact that I'm so out about all all of this part of me but yeah as far as i'm concerned my kids like it when i'm dressed up they don't mind it eleanor thinks i look pretty sometimes sometimes bella says i look like a lunch lady and she can kiss my vagina <laughs> my ass. they they Excuse can kiss me. my ass. i used to be a lunch they lady can lick my butt <laughs> I know you meant it in a way where I kind of look like a badass woman who could kick your ass with a ladle. Like, I understand that. But still, I'm not a lunch lady. I'm fabulous. I'm more fabulous to that than, a, than a lunch lady. Yeah. And, and, and my wife likes it that I dress up, and we dress up together. My wife told me that... Uh, she, my wife has been dressing up more and dressing up in dresses and, and doing a bit of her makeup and doing her hair. And she told me that she's been doing that more because she sees how beautiful her husband is when her husband is a woman that she makes that that makes her want to be more beautiful for me and so we do it together and sometimes on the weekends we put our best dresses on we have matching little black dresses and we listen to pride songs and we just get wasted together and high together and it's so much fun it's so much fun so if my family likes it then i shouldn't give a rat's ass what anyone else thinks yeah 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 so so that's that I'm just going to be more open about it because no one's paying me. So fuck it. I can do whatever the fuck I want. Yeah. I, I, I just personally yeah. love how, how the people who would want to stop you would be the people who would also tell you about freedom. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's so, it's, we live in such a world right now where people who are like, uh, we need to pass laws to make women stop doing abortions, stop getting abortions. We need to control a woman's body. A woman's body is not her own. She shares it, and, and she, a woman cannot be trusted to do that to her own body. And wait a second, you want to give me a vaccine? This is my body and my choice. Yeah. You can't tell me what to do with my body. And then yeah. there's all of these people who are like, masks don't work. I'm not wearing a mask because my president didn't wear a mask. And you know why he didn't wear a mask? Because he would smudge his orange face makeup. Yeah. Mm. And it's like the reason why you're not wearing a mask is because your president didn't want to smudge his orange makeup. Yeah. That's the only reason why Trump didn't wear a mask. And the only reason why you are now, like, beating the shit out of low-paid workers for saying, hey, wear a mask. Fuck you. Yeah. Fuck all of you. Yeah. So, sometimes I dress like this, and there you go. It's not a big deal. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, I... I... I, I'm really having a very hard time feeling bad about the latest co co COVID wave. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, man. We fucking begged you to get the vaccines. You didn't want it. Die. 
You know, I mean, it's not like yeah. they didn't try to fucking stop you from being stupid, but you insisted. Yup. You know. Yeah. And and, and I'm sorry. I, you know, I I don't have the sympathy for them I would have for others. Let's put it that way. Yeah. I fully understand. I fully understand where you're coming from. Yeah. You want me to cry for you now? You've been a little bitch. Yeah. But anyway, what's on the chap table? You've, you've mentioned it, but I do need to hear it again. Uh, we're going to be talking about Roots 2, Get Rootsier. We're going to be talking about Don Knotts. We're going to be talking about the lives and loves of Dobie Gillis. We're gonna, I, I, it's a short chap, but I'm really proud of it. Because it's about, it's for the culture. We're doing it for the culture, Bunny. For the culture. Yes. Yes, so I, I say proud. let's let's get on over to it. So absolutely for this week, this is Bunny Williams <sighs> saying self adhesive tape. Yes, please. And cut I on love that. that.